Uh, Adrian has uh, curly hair. I have wavy hair. I wave it goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a good one. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Adrian from Audio Excellence Canada. Philip to my right. And guess who we have joining us? It's Louis. Louis, my friend. Louis actually just joined us as part of the staff. So everybody congratulate him and thank him for send joining them, us. Send them emails whenever we give them an email. Yeah, yeah. If I can figure out how to do GoDaddy. But uh, yeah, I, I desperately needed somebody to help uh, in the store. And so uh, Louis uh, has uh, thankfully agreed to join us. So anyway, uh, you'll be glad to know we're not doing another of your favorite videos, the unboxing series. We're doing actually a review. Actually, we're doing two today. So the first one is the MagnaPan 3.7i. We got in uh, a pair about a week and a half ago. You can see the unboxing video if you'd like. Uh, the guys will link the uh, description, the link in the description box below. And so we've broken the speakers in or as much as we can in the last week and a half. Uh, let me give you a bit of the basics. Um, the 3.7i is their first um, floor standing full range speaker. It's also the first one that uses the true ribbon tweeter with quasi ribbon base and mid range panels. Rated at 35 to 40 kilohertz, 86 dB sensitivity, 4 ohms, and the dimensions are 24 inches wide, 71 inches high, and 1 and 6, 3 inches deep. I didn't do the calculations for the rest of the world in metric. Apologize for that. Uh, okay. Oh, price is seventy nine ninety nine US. Previously, you could get different finishes, and the price would be different for different finishes. Now it's all one standard price, eight thousand US dollars. All right. Who wants to start? Lewis. Lewis. Well, um, I do like the sound of the. Oh, actually, uh, hang on a second. Let's tell them the supporting equipment that we're using. Well, we don't know what he listened to. Okay. Because I listened to both the um, Hegel 390 and the Peach yeah, Tree. What else? What else was? Because well, let him finish. And the Peach Tree uh, Gan Fet uh, um, amplifier and the Predac preamplifier, and listened to both the Zen Mini Stream and the iFi Stream. Um, on the aesthetic part of the Maggie, it's definitely not a wife acceptable um, product. You know, um, when I, when I uh, asked, uh, was it Wendell? Yeah, I asked Wendell about it. Um, and uh, apparently, um, that's not true. A lot of people don't have an issue with the size. I think, I don't know if it was Wendell or somebody else. Uh, a lot of people don't have issue with the size. Um, it's it's more whether or not it's the sound issue, which surprised me because I always thought it was an aesthetic thing, you know, because it's such a big, tall panel. Knowing my wife, that will not be able to come I, into my I, household. I've never, I've never had a female visitor in my place that liked any of the big speakers I had in my places. And rightfully so. You have horrible big JBLs. Ugliest no, thing no, I world. had Martin Logan's. Well, those are nice. I, like I had CLSs and I had oh, I Arius's, so Arius is nice too. That's a really beautiful speaker, and she said, "Well, that's that's ugly." <laughs> and then the tube amps, well, that's definitely out. <laughs> Let him finish. Okay, we got only thirty minutes. Go ahead. Okay, so going on the sound wise um, is I, I I really like the Maggie three point seven, um, and um, the there is no brightness to the to the treble. There is no the mid range is quite good um, the bass well it satisfies me I can see someone who is a bass head would want wait, wait, to put wait, wait, a sub, wait, wait, wait. sub you're woofer. Jamaican I'm Jamaican yes where's the bias man <laughs> where's the bias <laughs> but I guess I've grown out of this heavy bass thing <laughs> but he does he's not a big fan of like Peter Tosh or you know Bob Marley or any of those guys oh yeah Bob Bob yes oh come on not, not Peter Tosh um, no not the ganja smoking um, <laughs> rebel uh, um, yes but um, definitely I do like the Maggie it's just that um, it would not work in my household and I could see wives objecting to that on a main floor maybe in a basement yes but definitely not um, definitely not on a main floor I was playing um, my type of old music um, as Alex behind the soundboard. 
sound yeah the so sound that, that the involve, sound engineer um that would involve like what early britney spears uh <laughs> no nope. banana rama well no. not, that's too old for him <laughs> <laughs> no actually it started off with um alex d playing some nat king cole and frank sinatra and it sounded wonderful to me oh, wait, wait wait alex you were playing nat king cole and frank sinatra okay kudos <laughs> so Anyways, um, that's my spin. Um, I'm new to this, so please bear with me. Um, Don't worry, we'll corrupt you. <laughs> <laughs> my, my, my short description, but um, overall, it's very positive. Um, if I lived on my own, it's something I could, you know, I could use. But as a married man, no. <laughs> Anyways, Philip, Philip, take it ahead. over. When I first started here, we had quite a few of the vintage Maggie's, the three series. Uh, there was like a 3.1, I think the 3.6. So, so, so those are some of the earliest products I actually sold here to people who were looking for, you know, bargains, right? They were relatively inexpensive and they were pretty impressive in that. Um, and I really hadn't heard big Maggie's in a long, long, long time. And, you know, they were effortless, big sound stage. Fast forward pair of 3.7s did come in uh, this was almost over four years ago and we set them up in the big room and every amp I tried on it it seemed to like gobble it up and finally we had a uh, um, um, D'Agostino momentum uh, monoblocks on them the original 300 waters and and I was I was trying to see how loud it could play and you know I didn't it wasn't prolonged but I had 300 watts coming out of the uh, D'Agostinos, it was pretty, it was pretty funny. Oh. And, and the speaker was like going like, can you got more? <laughs> Give me more. Because it wouldn't play any louder. That's when I began to realize that sometimes with these speakers, you, they will dynamically compress the louder you try to play them because they just won't get beyond a certain point. So really, I only started to listen to it last night you know, after everybody left the store. It took me hours to kick you guys out. There were, like, people here. That's why I got a call from Rogers. Nobody told me. I, to I told you I was going to stay Friday night, too. Yeah. Sorry. Anyway, I, I, it's okay. I, I told them that you were still here. I, I left as early as I could. No, it's um, okay. So I did listen to them quite extensively. I mean, you know, given that I have some experience on auditioning speakers. Um, and they were everything that I remember, but even better, because now I actually have real knowledge about how, sh how they should sound. And there was like nothing lacking from the speaker, in my opinion. There was just absolutely nothing lacking. It didn't need any more bass, in my opinion. Uh, it wouldn't give you anything like this. But panels generally cannot are not capable of doing so, and we've had Martin Logan CLXs in here, and they did not have any better bass. Even with the subwoofer, it didn't have any better bass than what the 3.7 had, and we were using you know relatively inexpensive amplifiers, like like uh, Lewis said. Uh, that speaker is just it's effortless compared to the 1.7, compared to the 0.7 compared to the LRS. It combines all the best attributes from those three other speakers and it sounds more natural, it's more exquisite. The top end is has this level of subtlety that you cannot get with a quasi ribbon. The true ribbon, it just completely disappears. You you don't really realize there's there's this there's this there's this vibrating element there that is um, um, you know, like it's it, the, because the ribbon's just that fast and it's it's colorless. So the top end is extended, airy. You get that big sound stage. Um, there's a real naturalness to the way the speaker is able to portray basically any music you pump through it. There was a little bit of dynamic compression, but I believe that's actually mostly to do with the amplifier now. The speaker, given the right kind of um, amplification, as I now understand, um, um, instead of having a point source, uh, so obviously there's there's a line there's a there's a line source because of what the ribbon is doing. So you can actually get a little bit of what we would normally consider to be imaging from that speaker. You do hear some of it. So uh, if you play it at a certain volume, this is one of the things I discovered. 
if you don't push it too hard, you play it at the na at a natural volume, you do kind of get life size images in front of you. Um, as you increase the volume, obviously there's going to be a big head kind of syndrome thing happening. But at the right volume, and I actually found myself turning it, turning the, the, the volume down on either of the amplifiers, uh, and it was just you know you're sitting there, you're going like this is really enjoyable. It's not too much. Um, uh, not too many other speakers you can say where when you play it at a lower level that it, it is equally as enjoyable and this is one of them yeah so it, originally in my email to the boys saying that we're going to do a review on the 3.7 and it would it would be good if we in context just so that people could get an idea of what it sounds like let's compare it to the lrs the 0.7 and so on and then this morning i come in and and started listening to the speakers. I had actually been listening all through when they first hooked it up, and then as it continued to break in, I would pop my head and listen for a few minutes and so on. Um, when I when I listened at four o'clock this morning uh, uh, in earnest, I started realizing there's no need to compare it to the other smaller Maggies. It, it, uh, while there is f a familial similarity, it's nothing like the small ones. It just it's just Oh my God, I don't know how to describe it. If you haven't heard it, it's everything that the smaller ones are and just supersize everything. Just yes, make it everything is just scaled up more. Yeah, right? yeah. Make it better in every way, shape, and form you can think of. Whereas the smaller ones hint at low bass, hint. This thing has low bass. It doesn't pound your chest, as Villa points out, but it's got low bass. Um, uh, uh, yeah, I, I wish it maybe had more of that chest pounding as a negative, but it's not a big enough negative for me. Beyond that, I, I really didn't wish for anything. Um, yeah, sure. Uh, as an audiophile aspect of it, you wish that maybe the imaging was a little bit tighter. You had more front and back separation, not just the, the fact that you have front and back. You wish there were more layers. But very quickly, you forget about those things. And next thing you know, you're just enjoying the music. And I played all See, we sorts. didn't even talk about this. Yeah, we, that's another thing. That's very yeah. true. We never, ever talk about things. As a matter of fact, when Luz came in, I said, you guys listen? And yeah, and he, he wanted to start telling me. I said, no, don't say anything <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, because we're going to save it for the video. So it's, it's – I remember thinking um, years ago, uh, when we had the 3.7 before and then the 3.6s and, and how hard it was in a sense to sell them because as Lewis pointed out, a lot of people would have difficulty uh, incorporating the speakers into their homes. But I couldn't help also thinking, boy, if you could, there's no better value out there. If you are a music lover and you and even an audiophile, there is no better speaker um, uh, until you easily double the money. And even then, there are a lot of aspects of this speaker that you cannot replicate with a typical dynamic cone speaker. Um, the sheer coherence, effortlessness, uh, live, life science, uh, the sense of, of, of life music, live music, you know, the sounds of openness and soundstage that you get out of a, a live event, that kind of a, 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 an effect is something that you can't get out of a normal dynamic speaker. Uh, and for eight thousand U.S. dollars, it's a lot of money. Don't get me wrong, but boy, you have to look at so much more to get even close. So we know what the pros are. Any cons? We got we got, our, our the whole idea of the video is to let people know what what they might be looking out the for. Aesthetic value. Okay, aesthetic value. Okay, good. What else? What do you mean aesthetic value? It's just tall what? and what's yeah. and wide. Like your box speakers, your, 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 <laughs> your clip JBLs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what uh, what other cons are there? What do you guys have? Negatives? I have That's none. It? Uh, it's still really amplifier sensitive, though. You yeah. have to have very good. Yeah, but at this price level, you'd almost expect it. Right? Well, so the story I always tell people, or not the story, but the, the what I tell them as a as a as not a caveat, but as as a um, if you're going to invest in MagnaPen, doesn't really matter which one figure on investing two to three times that same budget into electronics uh, you can get away certainly with the 3.7 you can you can you can use a slightly lower factor so maybe something that is at least as expensive or maybe double the price so count on having an amplifier in that price range in other words if you use something very inexpensive with it, it will not work properly. If you use something like we, what we got away with, which is something similar in the same price, 
then it can work and it and, and given the right one it does work quite well but certainly if you put like a big mac on it or anything in that in that in that yeah, area big pass labs big pass lab yeah. they will work beautifully with yeah. this ample uh, yeah. speaker yeah. that amplifier it, so it is a little bit amplifier sensitive but as with all good audiophile gear they you know they are okay these guys are amateurs when it comes to cons absolute what? amateurs that's it that's all they got all right here we go as much as i love the speakers you should be aware i played a really wide variety of music it's not my first choice when it comes to things like uh, reggae uh, r&b uh, contemporary r&b i should say not not 50s 60s uh, heavy metal hard rock um, uh, it wouldn't be my first choice of speakers if a lot of my music is is skewed towards that um, number two, watch very, very high levels. The tweeter is fragile. And we do get speakers coming in on a regular basis. Well, not regular, but occasionally where the client has blown the tweeter uh, and we have to replace it. Now, the good news is that to replace the tweeter, the simplest thing is to get your dealer to order from MagnaPan a complete um, uh, a magnet with the ribbon assembly. So all you have to do is take the screws out, replace the whole uh, array, put the screws back in, and you're done. So, so you can do that quite easily. Um, so watch that. Um, I hate those binding posts. Oh, well, that oh. goes without See? saying. For amateurs. All Absolute amateurs. We've, no, we've said this before yeah, yeah, in the but past. I am reiterating. See, reiterating. I'm telling reiterating. you. Well, reiterating. Well, that's a big word. That's yeah. poly polysyllabic. <laughs> did you, have you told Wendell? Like, I did. He, did. he laughs at me. Um, and then the last thing is, the original uh, 3 Series came with angle iron stands, um, which, in a way, well, very industrial and not particularly elegant, did a good job because the uh, pressure on the floor is higher, right? When, you're, when your surface area contact is much smaller, the pressure is much higher, and so a lot more of the vibration of the speaker and so on get grounded. Uh, these ones come with this beautiful, nice... Um, oval. Uh, yeah, MDF oval base, but it spreads out all the pressure, and so the, the contact is is Yeah, is the coupling with, with exactly. any mass is, is minimal. Yeah. yeah, so I would say try putting spikes. I haven't tried it yet, but I'm, I'm curious to see what that would happen, what it would do. And, of course, there are companies that make uh, aftermarket stands that could improve the speakers. Um, my MYE is one, and the other one is... My, um, Magna, what's it called? Magna Riser. Magna Riser is another one. Look into those. I think those will improve the speakers. They may not make the speakers look better, but again, if you don't have an issue with that, uh, I would I would look into this. And then pros, everything else. In other words, I really, truly love these speakers. I second I, that. Yeah. I you second that emotion? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Devotion, too. <laughs> so can I tell my story now? My oh, real I story? thought you already did. Okay, right, go I ahead. Stole, I told one little tiny story, but this is, this is way funnier. Okay. All right, uh, Alex is saying like 10 minutes. Yeah. This will only take a few minutes. It's, you know, you, you guys can laugh at me this time around. So when we took the th thing apart and we put it all together, uh, the boys did a good job. They, they assembled it, they got it running, and it sounded wrong. <laughs> and I'm looking at it going like, no, this is, this is, this is correct. It's just breaking in. And we had uh, some some other people in in the store at the time. I think you were there before and, you uh, officially joined us. And Mr. Andrew, and uh, right, my my client Rob Andrew, yeah. who said, "Philip, this is this is not good." <laughs> and I said, I told Rob, "No, no, 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 really, uh, this this is the way the speaker should sound. It needs to break in for at least a couple hours. The first hour is terrible, 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 right?" And and we I kept on playing it for him, and it, it, to my ears, it approved a little bit after about an hour or two and rob kept on saying no that's wrong that's 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 terrible i wouldn't buy that and i thought about it i said no you're wrong just get out of here so uh, rob did eventually leave uh leaving me uh, um, kind of perturbed and a little bit confused and befuddled and i remember on the back of it there seemed like uh there's two terminals that were not connected and i thought well, well that's really strange usually there's something connecting those things and then it dawned on me maybe i should look at the manual so for those of you out there who don't look at manuals, you should, because actually the answers are right in there. And, and then it, it clearly states it ships without any attenuation to the tweeter. To the tweeter. Uh, and they actually recommend that you put in the one ohm resistors, what they, sh what they ship it with the unit. So either there's a bus bar or there's a, a one ohm um, uh, resistor. 
I did put the bus bar in there. It sounded okay. I asked Alex, so does it sound any good? He says, well, it's a bit bright. <laughs> so Alex is telling me what it sounds like. I'm like, oh, I guess you're, you're right. And so eventually I put the one ohm resistors in it, and then it sounded it sounded really good. So let me tell you the corollary. First of all, yeah, everybody laugh at him. So second thing is, I uh, listen to both the bus bar and the one ohm, and I much prefer, maybe it's because now the speakers have had so many hours, I much prefer it with the bus bar instead of the one ohm. I found that with the resistor, um, uh, uh, it was fine, um, but I was curious to see what would happen if I switched it out, and I switched it out, and I preferred it. I found it more lively. I found uh, the the air to be better. Uh, it can get bright, especially if it, if you've got terrible recordings like you know some of the recordings I play. But overall, I preferred it without a resistor in the signal path. So definitely check that out and see what you prefer. And by the way, you can do the same thing with the mid-range as well. It does ship with a one ohm resistor for the mid-range. So check that out as well. Um, you may be tempted to replace the fuses that are in the speaker. There's a fuse for the mid-range and the tweeter uh, with uh, audiophile grade. By all means, try it. But just note that if you do so and the speaker gets damaged, it's not covered under warranty, as is typical with most manufacturers. Okay, we should uh, we should close this off. Uh, as usual, uh, please like, subscribe, turn on notifications, share the video, uh, add your comments. If, you, if you've if you heard Maggie's, tell us if you like them. If you don't, why? Um, if you've heard these, tell us if you like them. Uh, and then everybody laugh at Villet because he deserves I did. It. I did. After all this happened, I did send immediately almost uh, an email to my friend Rob and to Lewis to say that I, you know. Um, His golden ears failed him. I was wrong. <laughs> All right, Adrian from Audio Accents Canada, Philip, Lewis, and to the both Alexes behind the scenes, thank you very much. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.